All right, so what do you want to do? Do you want to go to Breggy News and then the Halloween costume contest and then Paranormal Trash? Or do you want to do the Halloween costume contest and then the other two? Or do you want to save it for last? All right, let's do... Somebody asked if your mom was single. Let's do... Um... I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do breaking. Uh, no, let's. Yeah, let's do breaking news. All right, let's do it. Let's kick it off. There we are. Breaking Here we are. Let's go. Only breaking two. News. Only two. Only two. Breaking only news two. today. And I feel like I should have put more because we're only at 15 minutes in. <laughs> I have a question for you. Is is this too much right here for the show? Never, man. Is Never. too much for the show? Do a little bam. I'm a father. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Boom. Go ahead. First article. Here we go. This actually happened on Long Island where Mike and I are both from. Oh, my uh, God. I totally didn't read the article, and I didn't know it was from Long Island. Yeah, man. So it's just loading. Uh, I wrote a little ditty about this today on Paranormal Warehouse. If you haven't seen it yet, you could go check it out. But a 57-year-old mystery might have been solved by a group of ghost hunters and a psychic. Recently reported by Fox News, bones were found in a Long Island, New York basement. Mike Carroll told Fox News that he believes the bones may belong to his late father who disappeared without a trace 60 years ago. Oh, shit. George Carroll disappeared in 1961 while living in Lake Grove. At the time, he left behind a wife and four children. According to the children, they never really received an answer on what might have happened to their father, and their mother, Dorothy Carroll, passed away in 1998. Okay. According to the New York Post, the bones were actually found on Halloween Eve in the basement by a psychic that the family invited to the house for answers. This is a quote from uh, one of the sons. They were twisted in a not weird looking, Carol told the New York Post. It was down and twisted in the dirt, not totally exposed either. Okay. Newsday originally reported that a group of paranormal investigators actually visited the home back in June. The investigators, while in the home, reported feeling a, quote, energy in the house. Now that the bones have been found and unearthed, the Suffolk County Police Department will try to use dental records and DNA testing to identify the bones, according to Newsday. An odd piece of information given to WABC-TV by Carol was that it had been rumored in the family for years that his father might be buried in the basement. Mm. So my question is, how and why did that rumor even start? Was he murdered? No, they didn't know what happened to him. He just disappeared. The kids thought he so, left the house. So he was and murdered and buried in, uh, in and, the fucking and, but basement. Then for, but then for some reason... They're saying he told WABC TV that they had this rumor within the family that the, he was possibly buried in the in the basement. But the, there's so this is like an onion here. There's so many layers to the story. So this guy disappears from his family, correct? Correct. And then 50 years later, a psychic says you should check the basement. And he's buried in the basement. Yeah, and they found bones. There's only I guess there's... someone murdered him and buried him in the basement. Well, why didn't he... But I don't know. What, I wish what, it was he more... teleport into the ground, and that was that was his demise. I mean, I wish there was more information. Um... I'm lying. There's three. There's three conclu. There's there's two three conclusions you can come to with this. Are you ready? Yes. One, he was murdered and buried in the basement. Two, he learned how to teleport, didn't master the skill, and teleported into the earth where he passed okay. away. And I'm gonna three, go. I'm gonna go with that well, one. Well, you haven't happen. heard the third one. Quicksand. Okay, I'm gonna go with he was murdered. A lot of people think the mother murdered him, the wife. I don't know. Was he, you know, was he a ball buster? You know. I don't know. I wish there was more information on the day that he disappeared. Um, of you, like what what the like the 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 events were that day. That I mean, according to them in the in the article, uh, 
it was like he left and never came back. Right. So, it to me, if that were to happen, how was he murdered and then put back in the basement? No, bro, he never left. He, it's all a story. He was murdered and then buried in the basement. So somebody in the family had to do it. Correct. Ugh, it's fucked up. I know, man. I mean, I think it's clear cut. Yo, I got a real important question. Uh-oh. If someone teleported, do you think you would make this sound? Actually, I hope it makes that sound when we're <laughs> able to teleport. I know. They're like, yo, we have made this unbelievable technological advancement. We could travel instantaneously. Except it sounds like an air whistle every time you do it. Which, like, it would deflate the coolness. Definitely. Now, my question is, what happens if they find out that that isn't their father? Like, the DNA testing and the dental records say that that's not their father. Then, here you go, I'll t I'm immediate detective. Then, their father murdered someone, buried him in the basement, and bounced the fuck and out. And bounced. Oh, man! He bounced out. Just blew my mind. He, he, I don't know what the deal was. There was money owed. In a, in a fit of passion, he murdered Jim, buried him in the basement, and said, for my family's sake, for my sake, I have to go. I'm out. I'm out. Well, I mean, a lot of people think the wife just murdered him. I well, don't why, know. Why don't, well, we'll see what – we got we to gotta keep up on this and see if the DNA test shows that it's him. Yeah. But if it's him, how are they going to know – they're not, they're not going to be able to find out who actually killed him at this point. She's dead too. Well, then there you go. <laughs> and that, that's the perfect murder. You murder someone, and then you, you die, and then... And that's it. It goes to the grave well, with you. Well, that's, that's it. Um, that's it. We'll keep, we'll keep an eye on this story. If you guys see anything on this story, let us know uh, if there's any updates. I, I, think, I think Suffolk Police Department needs to give Mike Diamond a call, honestly. Okay. You know? Tell the general to uh, g give me the hookup. <laughs> he didn't do something. He was an asshole. I understand. He had friends. I, he, <laughs> you know, come on. All right. Uh, let's, this let's, one's let's... exciting. I have a video for this one. It is hilarious. All right. Here we go. This uh, is from the daily dot dot com. Uh, a YouTube star exposed for faking paranormal video. Shocker. Um, a YouTuber. Damn. Damn. Named Damn. Named Mo, named Mo Sarji, who produces scary paranormal content, has apparently been exposed as faking a recent video. We, we've had him on here beforehand. Oh, really? Yeah, I think he was. I think he's the one who did the the Queen Mary with like the the Best Buy employee standing in the background <laughs> that he claimed was a ghost. It was just a man in a blue polo standing. Oh there. yeah, yeah, I remember that. Oh Jesus. All right, so, uh, so a YouTuber named Mo Sarji, who produces scary paranormal content, has apparently been exposed as faking a recent video. But now some Redditors are concerned that it was all set up to get Sarji even more exposure in YouTube subscribers. On his channel, which has one point wow. five million, his channel has one point five million subscribers. I don't know why we can't get that shit. But Sarji visits haunted dwellings. We're not faking cool shit, man. Yeah, we're just, we just have cool shit. Let's just let's just announce it today that we're gonna start faking everything. And we said it once. Whatever we put out, we said it. And that's everybody else's problem to figure out. All right. Well, let me let me, let me finish this. I'm just saying. Uh. So uh, on his channel, he has 1.5 million subscribers. Sarji visit, visits haunted dwellings and films his reaction, reactions to his frightening surroundings. But in a video uploaded to a small YouTube channel called Preserving Number One, it's revealed how the scary social media sausage was made. I don't know why it's called sausage, but... Yeah, why is it called sausage? I don't know. That was a weird term <laughs> to use. That is amazing. <laughs> I'm going to start using that. Oh, Yo, that's, a big, that's a piece of sausage right Yo, there. instead of Paranormal Trash, it's now going to be called Paranormal Sausage. Oh, my God. All right, so before – okay, so in the video, 
Uh, before a door in the basement of a, a dilapidated haunted house supposedly opens by itself, it's revealed that Sarge's partner accidentally sets open the door a little too quickly. Sarge, Sarge quickly cut... Oh, man, what happened here? What happened here? What, what, what did happen there? I don't know. All of a sudden, the article went away. and Okay, here we go. So... It's revealed that Sarge's partner, it all, all of a sudden just went blank. It was weird. Accidentally sits open. Um, now I'm all discombobulated. It's revealed that Sarge's partner accidentally sits open the door a little too quickly. Sarge, Sarge quickly cuts, tells the partner to wait for the right cue. He says, when I say mental asylum, do it, he instructed and starts filming again. Then when the door opens supposedly all by itself, Sarge does the freak out and sprints up the stairs and out of the room. The expose video, which already had 100,000 page views as of this writing on a channel that only has 40 subscribers, redirects to a re-uploaded video of the original vlogs by Sarji. It apparently was deleted after he was quote-unquote exposed by the video on preserving number one. In that video, Sarji mentions over and over again how scary the house is and how he's by himself. Now, I have a question. So he yeah. did... he. He just fucked up and didn't edit out that that part when he, uh, when he was compiling the video. I guess, but my question, I, I don't know. I don't. I guess that could be a possibility, but I feel like he would have realized that. I don't um, know, man. Maybe he was just rushing it out. Maybe he had a couple of one or two vodka sodas that night and just was a little loose and just missed it. All right, well, the article continues by saying, so it was a fake and Sarji, who now claims that he's been hacked, apparently has been exposed. But then com uh, commenters on social media asked whether the expose was actually a setup by Sarji to bring more attention to himself, which also makes sense. <laughs> After all, the preserving number one video was at the top of the video subreddit on Thursday morning, and tens of thousands of people had already watched it. I don't know, man, but... He but now, e one... now, now everything after this video that he makes, it's going to be yeah, garbage. Yeah, I mean, let's be real. Oh, all right, let's backtrack a little bit. Do you, do you think any – I mean, we've seen some of his videos before, too. We didn't think they were any sort of paranormal. We thought they were fake as fuck as well. So for him, he's doing this for views, likes, and money, correct? Yeah, but 100%. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna assume – He's getting great. He's probably making decent money with that with that those amount of views. He's probably getting. I think he gets millions of views on his on his videos. Right, and he gets and then he gets paid. So, um, to continue the article, uh, one redditor sarcastically pointed out, "This is a quote from the redditor. To be fair, it actually does make it does make some sense if you're open minded enough and try to look at things from the other perspective." for a moment. The Illuminati were angry that Mo Sarji was getting a lot of subscribers way too quickly on YouTube. <laughs> they just couldn't allow that to happen at any cost, so they hacked Mo's social media accounts. What? That anonym anonymous hacker apparently took over Sarji's Twitter account because the group wants to destroy YouTube. So this is apparently this is from his Twitter account that was hacked. And it says we don't care about you or the problems we have given him. This is a game to us, and a game we aim to play till the bitter end. How's your race car, by the way? It would be a shame if something happened to it. Our mission, our goal, our main objective is purely to destroy YouTube and make everyone on YouTube look completely ridiculous at any cost necessary. Jeez. Uh, that's pretty creepy. I mean, it's hilarious. What a troll move. I mean, it's it's kind of that's that's kind of weird. Now so I, last, I have the video. All right, hold on. In the last month, Sarji usually adds between 900 to 1600 new subscribers per day. But Damn. according, to, but according to Social Blade, a YouTube social analytic site, Sarji lost 42 subscribers on Wednesday and a few hundred more so far on Thursday. And this is an all an elaborate ruse to bring himself more subscribers. Subscribers so far, it's not working. Yeah, I mean, yo, he was cruising on up. He fucked up. He fucked up. Is what happened. Which is funny. He fucked up. Let's play the video though and see what everybody else thinks. All right, here we go. Look at that. It's been got volume on that bad boy. Ooh. Here he goes. So it goes on for I was a about while. To show you this guys place is definitely creepy. He like points out a secret out, trap closed on the ground over here. Going and that I accidentally hit the off button on my camera. You can and see the door open. They heard that behind him. 
Which is where the oh, there's nothing but place. spiders in there. Mad spiders. It literally looks like... Someone now, do you think he set the, the, these, this clothes up right Dude, here? I bet he did. Uh, I bet he did. Be some homeless people. I bet he did. But one thing I noticed... I mean, that bottle right there of detergent looks brand new. For an old spooky house like True. this, it kind of reminds Dirty me of... Dirty up the clothes? No, you're too... Dirtied you're up the clothes, took some old clothes or whatever. Side. So he goes in here, his buddy is like, nah, 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 not yet, not yet. And he walks away. One thing I he noticed cuts. about this place... It's not just a spooky. He goes, he's eyes. like, oh my god, there's a handprint on here, which was not there right in right the here. last shot of the video. He's like, oh my god, look at this handprint. So handprints. Which he clearly it just put there. It gives me like this weird, weird vibe. Goes back to the same and spot, it kind of and then the door like an old mental asylum. magically. It really, really does. <gasps> look at this place. <gasps> Run, Serge. Look that's that. it. Yeah, this is some bullshit. I know, it's, it's hilarious. I... He definitely fucked up with editing because it cuts right after his boy is standing there. So yeah. I bet he just he just clipped it too too early and that was it. Yeah, that was terrible. Well, that's how it goes. Yeah, I mean, and listen, and not to single out him, I just found this story today. Um, ah, there's hundreds of thousands of people doing the same thing. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And you'll see when we do Paranormal Trash at the end of um, Real or Fake tonight, you'll see some more ridiculous episodes, uh, videos as well. I found a real gem. I don't, I don't even I know. Can't wait. It's not paranormal whatsoever. It's just hilarious. Well, do you want to do Paranormal Trash and we'll end with the costume contest? Sure. Here we go. All right, here we go. Paranormal Trash, everybody. My favorite episode. It's not an episode, it's a segment. That'd be my favorite segment. Shit. But, yeah, I know, you're really... I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. So, I'm trying to think... Alright, I'm going to start off with this one. I, I have no theme this week. I have no theme. Alright, no theme, so I don't have to guess, which is great, because I usually get it wrong. You just don't like to guess. I don't know why. It's just kind of sad. But here we go. Alright, here we go. Paranormal Trash. So, in this spooky video, this guy is walking through the woods. It goes on. We'll chat. We, we got to chat for like a minute here. But he's okay. going through the woods, and he encounters a mystical beast. Now, what do you want, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> well does it, it we don't know where this is right no idea okay i would say the woods oh thank you um there's a creepy well here which is ideal for spooky factor yeah um hey yeah, it looks around no, nothing abnormal you know actually i think these piles of rocks he's like what are these rocks doing here What's this all about? I mean, it looks like a... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, there... Oh! I startled the baby. So, here he goes. He turns, and then this beast meets him. Oh! Yo, he looks at this thing for way too long. Way too long. If anybody saw that, I would have pooped and then ran. Pooped and then ran. Pooped and then ran. You know what I mean? Somebody said it looks like a, Christy in Facebook said it looks like a VR game. It does look like a VR game. So that's the first paranormal trash. Patty said Christmas lights. <laughs> <laughs> the, the periscope is on a, a delay, and Heather yeah. said, please let it be a unicorn. Guess <laughs> what next week's paranormal trash is going to be. Unicorns. Unicorns. Do you want to see unicorns? Yeah, man, we could do unicorns next time for Paranormal Trash. Have you ever seen the movie Cabin in the Woods? Uh, I don't think so. I think it was one of my favorite quote-unquote horror movies that have come out in like, I don't know, I guess it came out years ago. But uh, they have a scene where they have all these paranormal creatures locked up. 
Uh-huh. And they are released, and a unicorn stabs a guy right through the chest, and it's hilarious. <laughs> it's amazing. Aren't they remaking that movie or doing a reboot or something? No, I mean, it, it was a unique film. It was a new film, like, four years ago. So that's all I got. Okay. All right, well, Halloween's over. Wait, that's the only paranormal trash? Oh, yeah, wait, I forgot. We have another one. Jeez. <laughs> here we go. You ready? All right, so there's this ooze right here. You see this? Yeah. And it's leaking down. I'm going to add the audio. So this family, one of the kids that they're about to show, says, yo, Dad, there's this, like, goo, blood, leaking on the kitchen wall. <laughs> and this news company does these reenactments in these uh -huh. poor 3D animated things, and they are hilarious. Look at this shit. So, so he cleaned the blood. It dripped back down. They went upstairs. Some dude fell and died, and it was actually his juices leaking from the top into their kitchen. Into their what kitchen. The fuck i know dude i during this part they're like they promptly uh chose another apartment room and moved but yeah i would move that's fucked up yeah they originally thought it was some sort of uh paranormal situation look at these things tomos tomos news we could we should keep an eye on that i feel like they they're gonna give us some quality quality i, I almost want to make tomos future. news its own segment we should. I don't know if we're allowed to do that, but... Uh, we'll just take one every now and again. <laughs> right. I mean, I would be creeped out if there was blood dripping down from the wall. Uh, the general said on the last one, Paranormal Trash, uh, that it might have been Bigfoot. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i go with Bigfoot. I'll uh, go with Bigfoot. This reenactment, this reenactment is something else, let me tell you. It's amazing. And, yo, this is nothing. Like, I've seen... I You know, I went down the rabbit hole earlier today. Toho... Make some dope shit. <laughs> I'll I mean, tell you that. It, uh, that is crazy that it just leaked through like that. Yeah, dude. I think he was up there for a long time. They didn't smell anything? Uh, well, they did then. Wow. Yeah, pretty gross. Wow, wow, wow. Yep. So, you know, we had a... Uh, we had... My wife heard a waterfall in our in, in our walls recently. Okay. Was this today? Yesterday. I don't know what day is what. And she said it, it literally sounded like an ocean falling through the walls. That's not good. And people came over and just said, uh, yeah, it was upstairs. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, you've got to worry about it because then you're going to get mold. There, there has to be so much mold behind these walls. It must be incredible. You should get a mold test, man. What am I going to do about it? You could complain, like, you could contact, like, New Jersey State, like, whatever, and complain and report that you have mold in your walls and that they're not doing anything about it. All right, well, maybe I'll do that, Chris. I'm just saying. Maybe I'll do that, Chris. I'm just saying. I had a raccoon in my wall once. Was he your friend? No, it scared the shit out of me. It was, like, 6 o'clock in the morning. I was clawing at, in the wall behind my bed. Oh, my God. That is terrifying. Michael Michael said black mold is against the law, man. Get on that shit. All right, you Michael. Bait. You got it. Motivation. Mess, Here we go. Don't mess around with that. I'm not. Against the law? Uh, That's crazy. Yeah, man. What? If they can't just let you die from mold, black mold poisoning or whatever. I guess you're right. What if the mold takes over my mind and I become a... A zombie of sorts. Yeah, you can get really sick from that shit. I like how it got real serious. <laughs>